Chris and Chris Talk Movies. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the podcast. My name is Chris Ferry, and of course, my intrepid co host. I'm Chris Huddleston. Today, we are very excited to be talking about a new film that came out, it's listed as 2020 Gretel and Hansel. I'm called Gretel, and this rough one here is my brother Hansel. fairy tale again. It's too scary, you know, start seeing things that aren't there. You've been turned out of your home. Set out to fend for yourselves with only your clothes and your hides. I'm hungry. I'm hungrier than you are. Because you're a pig. <gasps> Look. It smells of cake. Careful with that, dear. I'd hate for you to start something you can't stop. Please make your acquaintance. I'm called Gretel, and this rough one here is my brother Hansel. Ouch! There's something wrong here. But it's so pleasant. Where are all the animals? From where does she draw milk? <laughs> I'm coming. This is your power. To see what is hidden and to take it. <laughs> we were given the same gift, the same magic. What did you do with him? All that is left is to make him. Okay, that is kind of a long trailer, but I think you get the, I think they're really trying to make the point about how scary this film is. Chris, how about a synopsis? All right, so Gretel and Hansel is the third film by Osgood Perkins, where he's sometimes listed as Oz Perkins, who you said uh, what sounds like a, a Batman villain. Um, he is the son of uh, Anthony Perkins from of Psycho fame. And it is, uh, I can't imagine that there are too many people that don't know the story of Hansel and Gretel, but it's a uh, Grimm's fairy tale, I believe, about a boy and a girl whose mother can no longer provide for them. And so they set off into the woods to find work and some various, they run into some various characters early on. And then finally they stumble upon this house where an old woman lives and uh, the old woman welcomes them in. They, she seems to have an unending supply of all the food they could ever eat, which initially is really great to them be because they were pretty much starving in the forest. Um, and they stay with her for a time. And then I, I won't say what happens right. from there. Uh, things get hairy. Yeah. Things um, get hairy. So, We'll just start right off the bat. As usual, we spoil these movies for you. Okay. So, but this, uh, in this case, it is a new movie. So if you want the unblemished take on it, uh, please don't listen to this episode before watching it because we're going to talk, we're going to talk about it all different kinds of ways, including spoiling everything. Okay. So you're warned. And now please turn off the podcast if you want to. And you were warned. Right. So, of course, the old woman is a witch. Durr, doing. I mean, yeah, that's Hansel and Gretel. Um, what did you think of this film? So uh, I'm, I'm a little mixed on this, I would say. So uh, first of all, I would say I have. Well, I've seen kind of one and a half of his other movies, this Osgood Perkins. Um, his first movie was called The Black Coat's Daughter, another indie horror movie. Um, which I liked a lot. His second one is called uh, I Am the Pretty Thing That Lives in the House, 
which got quite a bit of indie horror buzz and it's really really slow i i honestly couldn't get all the way through it it was so slow basically my thoughts on this with gretel and hansel the visuals in this are fantastic i i loved the look of this the the cinematography is great the set design um there's a lot of really spooky imagery but there's no it's creepy and eerie, but there's no there's no real gore or anything in this. The story is lacking, I would say. There's just not a lot to it. We essentially know what's going to happen. The only kind of um, kind of new spin I felt on it, and this, you know, the I don't know how you feel, but the uh, my real exposure with Hansel and Gretel is the Bugs Bunny cartoon. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, you know Han Hansel. Uh, <laughs> Hansel? Yeah. So, <laughs> and I, you know, I'm sure there are a lot of people, if you're of a certain age that are, that are familiar with that, but the, the one kind of, I don't know if you'd call it a twist and this may be in the original fairy tale. I don't know, but the witch basically is grooming Gretel to be another witch. Yeah. Um, and she's basically, you know, in the, the story as I knew it, the she's fattening both of them up and she convinces them to get in her oven and uh, then, you know, they, they kill her. Um, but they it doesn't really, her. yeah, they trick her and kill her. It doesn't really go that way in this. She basically is trying to uh, fatten up uh, Hansel, who's the, the little boy, the little brother, but she's, she's kind of grooming, uh, Gretel to be a witch. She's training her, um, you know, in witchcraft and all of that. So, uh, that was kind of, kind of the only different spin that I saw on it. So that there's just not a whole lot to the story. It's, it's right at 90 minutes and that's about the limit for this movie. I feel, you know, if this had yeah. been a two hour movie, it would have just been too long. Um, so I don't know what, what did you think of it? I agree. I, I agree. Certainly it's visually sumptuous. Yeah. Um, it, it's really, really gorgeous. And, you know, there are a couple of little jump scares, things wipe the camera, you know, and the cat jumps out or a thing cause. I mean, it seems like you can't make a horror movie without speckling a few of those in there. But dread is the kind of overwhelming tone, right? You're, you're just dreading what's going to happen. And it doesn't really pay off in that regard. I don't want to say it was poorly done or a bad movie it did feel slow mm -hmm. even at 90 minutes it felt longer than that and i wasn't struggling you know to like not turn it off uh i watched it and i was just constantly thinking man that wow beautiful shot great design um i did i liked the twist that gretel is you know a young teenager probably um, you know, mid, mid teens. Uh, is that how you read it? She's like 16, 15, yeah, something, something like that. Like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then Hansel, or maybe even supposed to be younger, but she reads as that. Um, and then Hansel is, you know, nine, 10, 11, yeah. maybe pre pubescent. And I liked the twist of the witch not wanting to simply eat them both, but almost being bored and seeing potential in Gretel and, you know, that more interesting than eating both of these kids would be sort of corrupting and converting and leading her down the same path that she went, leading Gretel down the same path that she went by convincing her to eat her brother. Mm -hmm. um, and I just thought, I thought that was fresh and I thought the witch, I thought that was a great performance. Yeah. I really, I her really name is thought... Alice. I don't know how you pronounce it. K R I G E Krieg. Um, yeah. I watched this with my sister and, um, she, that, that actress, she said plays almost an identical character on 
uh, it's a show and I now I've, I've, uh, I can't remember what the name of the show is, but I, it's a show uh, about witches and fairies and things. And, and my sister said she's almost exactly the same in that show as she is in this movie. But yeah, she's great because she's really creepy. Um, but sort of charismatic too, you know, yes. you're not, uh, yes. um, I don't know. She was really great. And then the, the actor who is, uh, Gretel is her name is Sophia Lillis and she's from the, the it movies. Right. Um, she was good. The, the only kind of criticism, the, the only kind of criticism with the acting that I, that I had is so then you have the, uh, the boy playing Hansel is named Samuel Leakey. And he's yeah. okay. I mean, he's a, he's kind of whiny, but I think that's how he's written. Uh, but I don't know if he's American or English, but he was doing kind of an English accent, and she wasn't. Uh, yeah, that bothered it, me a little bit. It and, all and, drifted but at times she would, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. At times she yeah. would be a little bit. She would kind of drift in and out of. And people American sounded a, a little bit Irish or yeah, yeah. a little bit like the Netherlands, you know, or, or a little bit German and then not, and then just yeah. American. And it made me wonder about that. I wondered about that. Uh, she, you know, she's that, that, that actor is terrific in it. She's dynamite. Yeah. And I'm glad that I saw her in that prior to this, because I think with her, I think it's an issue of directing would be my mm -hmm. hunch. Um, because Krieg or, or we'll just say the witch, if she was already doing something that was really, you know, he, he was probably like, just got out of her way. Right. And she was just like, well, I got this one in my pocket. I'll just do this. And it's dynamite. So he was like, great, great. Do you need another take? I'm good. We'll keep that one. Um, but with the kids, I think they kind of got left out. You know, I mean, it was tempting to think that from this performance, the actor playing Gretel maybe isn't all that great or maybe is a little stiff or wooden, but we know that she's not because we've seen her hand in really terrific performances. Um, yeah. Well, at least the one. And with the kid, with the boy, I don't know. It's hard to find really good kid actors. Child actors are just, you know, that it's age. Hard. It's hard. very rare. And, you know, I'm not, he's not the worst kid I've seen. No, screen, no, he wasn't terrible. He anything. wasn't really, you know, I mean, you've seen Spielberg managed to get great stuff out of kid actors. And this is yeah. not that, you right. know, uh, it's telling the story, but it's not really adding anything to it. Um, the performance of the witch though, it, it really is. It hits so many marks. It's um, creepy and otherworldly. Uh, and uh, I mean, you put your finger right on it. Um, charismatic in in a way that in retrospect, you're like, well, it would have to be, right? Because otherwise, why, why wouldn't little kids run screaming from this mm -hmm. spooky place? <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's, it's not subtly spooky. It's an overtly... It's like a black house and the lighting in the inside is red. It's terrifying. Like mm -hmm. you, and I know they're starving, but you wouldn't hang around there um, unless there was something oddly compelling about the old woman who lived there. And there really is. And she's scary looking, but she's also sort of frank and really open with them. You know, uh, it, yeah. it, it, it to me, without that performance of the witch, the whole thing wouldn't have stood up. I really think she anchored it. And I would say, I'm going to skip ahead to the end. I, I would say that I recommend you take a look at this movie just on her performance alone. Uh, that and the cinematography. But mm -hmm. we are getting ahead of ourselves. So what else? I mean. Well, I would say, and this isn't necessarily fair to the movie itself, but this is a one of these movies that in my mind, I look at the potential of it and see that uh, this director is obviously very talented. I think you, you pair his visuals with a really great script and you could have something, you know, incredible. It's, it's kind of interesting. This was one of the, and I was trying to find the, the numbers and I couldn't, this was one of the last, uh, 
kind of major releases before the pandemic hit. I, th- mm-hmm. I think this was sometime in February and this played right here in Parkersburg, West Virginia. And this is very much, and you know, this is an art house movie. Um, I feel, and you kind of wonder on the one hand, I like to see films like this get in the theater, but on the other hand, you kind of wonder what the studio was thinking. You know, this is a, uh, sure. It made, um, it brought in about $15 million here, which I don't, I don't know what the budget was on it, but when was it, re- but do you know when it was, was the, it like a January, February, March release? Cause that's yeah. kind of a tough time to the, the actual release date was January 30th. Oh. Um, it, re- it was released in six markets and then I guess it did well enough that they went wide with it. Huh. Um, and, and I think this was on. Like I say, I I couldn't find the exact numbers, but I think this was on like a couple thousand, twenty five hundred screens, uh, in in February. So the thing that's that's odd about it is you wonder, outside of an indie audience, who is this for? It's too scary for kids. Definitely, uh, it's too definitely scary. not a kid. Definitely yeah, not a kid's I mean, if you were. 10 years old or something like that, you would be terrified if you watched this. It, it would give you nightmares. Yeah, it would give you nightmares. Um, so it's not a movie for kids, but it's not a movie for, you know, it's not a movie for the hardcore horror fan that wants to see gore and stuff like that because there's no right. gore in it. You right. Know. So let's let's pause there for a second and push in on that, because we both started off saying it's not scary. And we just mm-hmm. said, if you saw it as a kid, it would give you nightmares. And I I just want to take a second to sort of clarify that the imagery is very. Um, it, it's very effective in terms of creating a tone. And I think the imagery in several cases is quite upsetting. I mean, it's nightmarish in in spots. Yeah, you know, just these yes. kind of witches in the back of the woods with this yes b- backlighting. You know, it's really yes. really effective. Simple things like being lost in the woods and seeing a shape, the person's shape, or the lighting, or the sounds in the woods. Um, things like you know, uh, um, um, you know, a little house in the middle of the woods just in the middle of nowhere, you know, just this incredible sense of ominousness around it. Like I I bet seeing this on the big screen would have been something. And I thought that several times watching it on my computer was like, man, I bet this thing in a, in an actual theater is immersive. Um, It's just, there's only a couple of, surprises when you start with a movie about Hansel and Gretel and it's two kids that go into the woods and find a witch's house uh, who wants to cook and eat them. Uh, You know, there's only so many surprises. And I think that the big one is that turns out the witch is sort of grooming Gretel. And it's turns out that Gretel is sort of interested, (laughs) you know, Mm Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's, you know, because, the oh, they're eating the kids. Well, that's not a surprise because we know Hansel and Gretel. It's just there's not. It's a little hamstrung by the source material. Mm-hmm. Because you don't get that great horror thing of there being um, a reveal. You know, he's in the house. Uh, Soylent Green is people. You know, there's no. The, the bottom doesn't ever drop out because we already know the story does that do you oh does yeah, that yeah. Make, do you think that do you agree absolutely yeah I, I feel exactly the same way and there are some things early you know they encounter it's kind of like every and i've always taken this story from a child you know from childhood as it's this cautionary tale of basically you can't trust strangers you know if it's right, it's, yeah. it's you know i'm sure this story was told to like don't venture off into the woods and you know, to, because strangers are bad and, you know, and everybody that they encounter, except for one person in this film has bad intentions. And there's one part where they, um, they go to this place and there's basically like a vampire or a zombie or something. Something. And there's, yeah. Which is never unpacked or explained. It's never unpacked and they never come back to it. And there's, they don't even talk about it. No, no, they don't even talk about it. 
And there's, I guess you'd say the huntsman or whatever, you know, kills this creature. And then he never it, comes back. You know, incidentally was in his house. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not like it was roaming around outside. They lie down on this bed and it sort of like sits up next to them. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. it's this body. Was it a zombie? What? what, what and they don't say that was crazy. What was that? No, there's just no. Even he doesn't. Even the huntsman doesn't acknowledge it. It's, yeah. it's a very strange. And it then was very so, freaky. I mean, that was a very freaky yeah. scene, you know. But it's just, it was just kind of a throwaway thing. You know, it didn't really set anything up or or anything like that. It felt a little bit like, you know, on they did the Hansel and Gretel thing. And then on paper, they weren't to 90 pages. <laughs> so they're mm -hmm. like, all right, we need something that sets a tone and Oh, what else is, uh, Oh, a huntsman. We could maybe, you know, and then I don't know, huntsman, there could be, we need something scary to happen here. Maybe something that establishes that sort of magic is real and that it's part of this world and people don't get too chuffed about, you know, they don't spend 15 minutes being like, wasn't that guy dead? How was he walking? Right. It was just kind of like, you know, scary stuff in the woods, I guess. I, I, the dialogue also, when we talk about not talking about it, was this strange blend of like dialogue it almost felt was clipped right out of the original Grimm story and just regular contemporary. Do you remember this? Like Gretel would sometimes say things like, in my memory, it's stuff like, Begging your pardon, sir, but I can turn down beds and I wouldn't want to impose upon your, you know, already great kindness with further burden to your, you know? Yeah. And then other times she's like, no, shut up, you know, talking to her brother. And it just feels like a couple of tweens arguing like siblings do. And the two, the two, it was mostly fairly contemporary sounding. Except for every now and then. Gretel would get like sort of formal and there would be this almost archaic flourishy dialogue. Do you, did that leap yeah, out I, at you at all? Yeah, it was, it, it's, a, I think it almost kind of goes hand in hand with the changing accent. You know, it's like, uh, yeah. part of the time we're British, part of the time we're American. So I think it was part of the time we're speaking in a contemporary way. Part of the time, uh, it's, you know, this more formal, as you said, almost kind of old English or something like, like that. Like fairy tale. Like one must not forget that we are in a fairy tale world after all, kind sir. Yeah. You know, and you're kind of like, uh, okay. I mean, it just, it didn't, it took me out of it. I didn't, it made, it, I was sort of like, if this is deliberate, it doesn't work, whatever it is. And I mean, I guess they couldn't go back. Yeah. I bet they shot some stuff and they're like, okay, this isn't working. <laughs> you know, Probably. Just, yeah. Uh, I almost just... wonder, like, you know, when you talked about the the acting of the the children and, and the acting of the witch, you know, that maybe the director was sort of like, OK, this take, you know, it's good. I I wonder if, you know, and I'm just reading this into it, but but I wonder if it's almost kind of like a George Lucas thing where there was obviously so much attention to detail with the look of this. Yeah. You know, almost like a a you know, a Kubrick kind of a thing where you probably think, you know, this guy just had everything mapped out exactly how he wanted everything to look. Yeah. And then it's sort of like the acting part. It's just going, like, okay, you know, just whatever, you sure. know what I mean? Well, not, not, of course, uh, directors all, they work in their own way. Um, mm -hmm. And I mentioned Spielberg earlier. I, I think Spielberg, especially with the kids gets right in there and does a lot of direct one-to-one -one kind of acting, yeah. coaching and directing and, you know, coming, coming from behind the camera and coming into the set and being like, that was amazing. Okay. We're going to do another one. This time I really want you to imagine, you know, it's like really with the actor and helping paint the picture in the actor's mind and helping them get to the place that he wants them to be emotionally. Mm -hmm. um, and other directors, do not work that way. Other directors, uh, and I can't cite you an example of one off the top of my head, but you know, they, they're like, you're the actor, you have the script. Maybe there's been rehearsal, maybe there's not, but 
you know, you, you come to the audition with some stuff prepared and they are like, great. Um, that's what I want in the movie. And they expect you to then have done all of that work yourself. That's your job. You're the actor, right? And I'm a director and I'm going to, you know, if they're more cinematographically, uh, I don't know if that's a word minded, um, they're going to, they're going to think of the film as painting with, so, yeah, they're really sh telling a story with pictures, and mm -hmm. if you want to win a win an Emmy for your acting, uh, great, fantastic, please do that. You know, um, mm -hmm. but it's not my. You know, if you show up and and hand me uh, and haven't made clear choices, and uh, it's not clear what you're doing, you know, if they do something and the director that kind of a director doesn't like it, they'll be like, no you know, be better. <laughs> you yeah. Know? That's not interesting. Do something else, you know, but they don't, they don't get inside the actor's mind. They know what they want to see and they'll say when they're not seeing it, but you don't get a lot of help from that type of, and maybe, maybe that all that is just to say, maybe that this guy is, is more the latter where he had a real sense of the kind of images at storyboarding he wanted to see come to life on the screen. And he said, okay, great. Well, we're going to cast the people that I think have the right look for this and the right feel, and then they're going to do great and we'll have a great movie, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause it looked to me like that, especially the younger actors were a little, were left a little, Gretel particularly since we, since we have seen, her deliver such nuanced performances in and she's got such an expressive face you know she's, these beautiful eyes um and there was just a lot where i felt like she just had uh it was not what was going on in her mind was not as specific um as it was in it definitely yeah you know yeah and uh, yeah. So, I mean, of course, you could have read the It novels ahead of time and you could have used those. But I mean, uh, it just makes me think the director makes me think maybe the director was kind of like, that looked great. I'm moving on. And I'm like, well, it looked great, but could have been better seen. Yeah, that that's it, it's definitely style over substance. And, and like I said, I watching this and, you know, and I've seen the other two movies that that he's done as well. I think he's a really interesting director and I want to see more work from him. And I'd, I'd love to see him, his visuals paired with, with a really excellent story. Cause I think, I think he could, you know, I, I, I think this is a filmmaker to watch. Um, but as far as the movie itself, I mean, I didn't dislike it. It's not a bad movie, but. Right. You know, I mean, we're picking it apart yeah. and I'm hearing myself and I'm like, wow, I'm really ripping this up. But, I'm glad I watched it. I probably wouldn't have watched it if you hadn't suggested it. Mm -hmm. Like I probably would not. This is not the kind of movie I seek out because it's right. really my thing. I eventually saw The Witch, um, the movie The Witch, just because it was getting so much positive feedback. Uh, but again, I saw the trailer for that and I thought, oh, that looks scary as hell. I don't want to yeah. watch that. Like, <laughs> How would you uh, say that? The were we talking about that at the end? At the end of, were we on on air last time, or were we talking about it after we stopped? I don't remember. I, I think we were on on air when we talked about it. How okay. would you say this compares it, to the witch? Well, yeah, I, I think there's a lot of similarities, certainly in the look and feel of it. Um, it's a fairy tale like that was set in a very specific time. Right. So they're wearing the kind of pilgrimy outfits and they are they are colonists in in the new world in the witch. Um, in this one, you know, it's not anchored to a specific place or time, but it does have the kind of feel of generally Grimm's fairy tale, right? Yeah. The mood of it you know they thinking back on the witch there are certain things that happen that are overtly supernatural and i don't remember there being much if any actual like cgi in the no. witch um but things like 
you know, the, her, the main character's younger brother has sort of a fit and that's just scary as hell. Like the family's huddled around him and he's writhing and crying out and having a sort of a, it's a seizure, but also like possession. It's, it's really scary. Like mm -hmm. it's really upsetting. Um, so I think in, in many ways, the witch was more effective it wasn't um, a boo, scared you kind of movie. It's this slow progression, like the family gets kicked outside the walls and they're afraid to be outside the walls, but they're just going to keep praying to God and doing their dharma and everything's going to be fine. Well, it's not. And things start, of, start to unravel and they just kind of continue to unravel all the way till the end. And it sort of accelerates, the unraveling sort of accelerates till the end. And then there is a sort of a reveal that you're like, oh, this is what it's been all about mm -hmm. all along. Um, and it's it's not the sixth sense where it's like, oh, snap. But you you kind of like, ah, okay. And it's a, it's a sort of a twist of the knife that you're like, wow. Um. And just things like filming that black goat. Mm -hmm. Like it's not an animatronic goat. It's not, um, it's a goat. Mm -hmm. But man, I mean, you, you, there is something profoundly sinister about that goat. Black Phillip. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's just, that's amazing. That's amazing filmmaking, you yeah. know? Uh, so I think that was a more effective movie in the same kind of wheelhouse as this where, the concept of the witch is not so much as someone who swoops out of dive bombs out of the sky on a broom and snatches you up, but someone who's there and there's elements of seduction and there's elements of um, bewitchment and stalking and, you know, maneuvering and Machiavelli, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and I think that, so the tone of both films felt very similar to me. I just thought the witch was a more effective uh, of the two. The witch is more, you know, you're in the real world. Essentially it's whatever yes. the 1500s or the 1600s or whatever, yes. where, whereas, and you have, you have these very subtle supernatural elements until the very end. And it's, you know, it's, it's really supernatural, but whereas with this Gretel and Hansel, it's much more of a fairy tale where you are, like you said, it looks, you know, it's like the Middle Ages or whatever, but you don't know if it's, you know, our timeline or whatever you would want to say. And there are these obvious supernatural elements that are just kind of accepted. You know, the characters they encounter, uh, like we said before, the vampire, zombie, whatever he is. And and it's they don't seem to be like, oh, my God, there are these creatures, you know. Um, so it's much more of a fairy tale tale uh land or world yeah and also you you mentioned the sense of dread in uh gretel and hansel the witch has even more i mean it's a oh, and it's yeah. this movie like there were things about gretel and hansel that i would um kind of for lack of a better word think of as fun i mean there were just a lot of scenes where i was like wow that's really a cool shot i really like how they did that you know and it just kind of made me smile whereas the witch is bleak and depressing. Oh, you yeah. know. Um, well, it's funny because both movies are about uh, they uh, are, have that sense of isolation, mm -hmm. right? Um, I, I think one of the one of the key things for me about the witch was you're dealing with a whole community of people that are hugely devout. And in mm -hmm. fact, the, the, the family in question, the father and the family, the movie and the witch gets kicked. They get kicked outside the walls of the, of the little township for being too extreme. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's something about his, he's too, um, too strict in his devoutness that they're like, you know, you can't, you got to chill out a little bit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can't be here. And he's like, you're all sinners and whatever. So they, they're like, great, get, get out. Mm -hmm. And they kick him out. And throughout the whole film, there is this intensity of faith, right? And, and it lands a couple of key points. It lands how difficult it is to survive. It's not a particularly bleak landscape. They're not in the desert, 
but it is utterly wild. It is a forest, right? Mm -hmm. And there's just this huge wall of timbers that these people have built around, presumably against animal attacks and maybe native indigenous people attacks, but, but certainly to protect themselves from the larger forest in which they live. So right from the get-go, to get kicked outside of the walls, you're vulnerable in a way that doesn't ever really need, it's not discussed in the film, it doesn't need to be, because just the immensity of this wall, and you're on the outside of the wall, Yeah, you know, you think, oh yeah, yeah, and so they're very industrious, like they, they roll up their sleeves and they build a house for themselves, I mean, it's just, you know, they didn't say you can't live within a hundred they're right outside the wall they're like you know 200 yards away from the wall but they have a house they built and you realize wow man you had to like you had to work just to carve um a living for yourself young children right so you're all the the vulnerability is getting amped up right we've got the eldest daughter and there's a son and then two young twins. And I, is the mother also pregnant with another baby? I don't remember. I believe so. It's been quite a but, while since I've seen it. but Yeah, but it, there's all these stakes that just feel like, you know, and the existential threat of the devil, essentially, of, mm. not, of not following the righteous path. That that's that the only thing that is that can protect you in this rough and wild world is the uh, purity of your faith. And so all throughout that movie, The Witch, you know, the movie is clearly, things. strange things are happening, right? They, they, the two younger twins seem to have a relationship with the goat, and the kids are siblings, and they're always accusing each other of witchcraft, which the parents do not take lightly at all. And so there's this kind of ominous, as they, as they all turn on each other a little bit as as they cope with this new situation, this new dangerous and difficult situation they're in. And genuinely supernatural things, although they're not CGI supernatural things, scary things start to happen, right? The baby, mm -hmm. oh no, there is a baby. She's just had a baby. The baby goes missing, like yeah. right off the bat. And which is terrifying uh, for any family under any circumstances. But so right up from the get-go, you know, the stakes just go through the roof and we wonder, we start to wonder, like, are they imagining it? Like, is this just the portrait of a family slowly going crazy under the, you know, because they're so, their, their faith is wound so tight in already difficult circumstances that they start to see the thing they, they fear everywhere. But then you're like, oh, there's actually is a person out in the woods, right? We see, we find a house and we actually see this, this woman out in the woods. So then you think, well, is she a witch witch or is she just, you know what I mean? Like you mm -hmm. start questioning what's real from the very beginning of that movie. And it plays with you masterfully throughout the entire course of it. And I think this one aims to do that but it's a little more show and a little less infer. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Um, and you don't know where you're going with the witch until you get there at the end. You really don't. I mean, you get to the end of the witch and I, I, can't, I remember scene to scene. I was like, now what? Now what? <laughs> I felt the same way. Yeah. You now, didn't what? Really... now what's going to happen? Now what are they going to do? You know? And in this one is kind of like, when are we going to find out when, are, when are the kids going to learn that she's eating children, <laughs> you know? Because, yeah. You know, and I think that's, I think that's tough when it's a story that you already are really familiar with, because like you said, it's kind of like, you're just watching, okay, when is this part going to happen? And when's that going to happen? And I think it's tough unless you totally reimagine the story. Um, which then it's sort of like, what's the point if you're going to take the source material and then just change everything? But there aren't the really... Only, the only hook of this movie is is that it's Gretel and Hansel, right? That, yeah. I mean, they're basically like, this is a modern, scary retelling of Hansel and Gretel. Come check it out. It's going to be scary. And that's the only hook of it, because... Exactly. Did you feel like there was any 
symbolism or any point they were trying to make, or was this just a straight ahead retelling of, of the, this old fairy tale? Uh, I mean, I didn't feel like it was trying to teach me anything. I think yeah. that they, they had some, I think they had some fun with uh, Gretel, her age and sort of adolescence and being, you know, young teen and, and female at that age and the way in which we explore um, a young woman coming to terms with her sexual power, if you're going to be Freudian about it, but also mm -hmm. her place in society and, you know, temptation and, you know, feeling, maybe feeling like her younger brother is a bit of an albatross around her neck, you know, and it, it right. would, would kind of be nice in some ways to not have to take care of him, you know, independence. So I, th I think that that was really interesting. I don't know that that transforms the movie into something capital M meaningful, but I do no. think it made, you know, if it had been two little 10 year old kids, you would have had to have some pretty spectacular child actors to pull that, you know, to pull oh, off a straight sure. retelling. Yeah. Of, yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't know. What did you think? No, I mean, I didn't really did see, you feel that it was. It, it seemed pretty straightforward to me. I didn't, I didn't, if, you know, if there was symbolism there, I didn't really pick up on it, you know? And like I say, with this one overall, the, I, I think what the problem with a movie like this is you, my favorite parts of this were actually, yeah, my favorite parts of this were actually when they just, are you still there? Can you hear me? I think I, I think, I think I lost you. Yeah, yeah, I'm still here. Can you? Hear oh, okay. Me? Yeah, I can hear you now. You were saying that, that the problem with a movie like this is. Oh, I was just going to say the problem with this movie in particular is you just kind of wonder who it's for. You know, like I was saying before, it's not really scary enough for a hardcore horror audience, and like you know, teen people, teen horror audience wouldn't go for this. It's probably, but on the other hand, it's probably too much of a horror film for the really art house crowd. And then it's obviously not for kids. So it's, this movie is kind of a tough sell. I feel. I, I just thought that you the sort of mainstream horror audience wants more of, um, a terrifying monster as the bad guy, right? Mm -hmm. It's insidious where it's some sort of a demon or it's the ring where she comes out of the, t you know, there is, yeah. Um, the monster is this terrifying menace and not a witch who is sort of charming and does sort of take care of you. Yeah. I, I mean, hmm. then we start to get into the territory of the thriller which has a supernatural, um, you know, wing to that genre where, you know, it turns out the, the woman he's been seeing is actually a psychopath or something, mm -hmm. and, you know, and it's this sort of like, well, if things were good and then things got a little strange and then, you know, and then, then stuff got scary, but it, this almost straddle it's, it, it, this is clearly a horror movie because from the look of it, but, you know, the relation, it's really about a relationship with this witch and discovering that the witch wants something of you that you don't want to, to do. And those were the most interesting parts of the movie for me. Like when the witch was making her a sleeping potion and, you know, and, and you, you saw her like grinding the things in a pestle and yeah. I just thought that was really interesting and I was really engaged in those. Like, what does witchcraft actually look like? Like, does yeah, does she wave her blackened fingers? Which was a cool design touch, I thought. Oh yeah, that was creepy, the the black 
yeah fingers because you know and the, what, and the flames yeah. flicker in the shape of a dragon or a snake and you're just kind of like okay yeah cgi um i just thought it was much more interesting to explore the practical side of witchcraft because of course actual quote-unquote witches um I mean, we're burned at the stake for doing mm -hmm. things like you know uh natural medicine and you know if you dabbled in stuff like that then whoa you're witchcraft in league with the devil you know um but it wasn't necessarily uh you know eye of newt and whatever and it's a potion that turns you into a bat it, you know yeah uh, so i'm always i'm interested in see and playing with that what's scary about it is finding a woman who has the audacity to a be alone right it, especially when you're talking about a period piece like when witches were burned at the stake to be alone knowing the danger of it right uh, and to to and how that person survives on their own and and what kind of quote unquote magic they come up with and what knowledge they have and I just, I think that's really interesting, and I love when you get a, a movie that's clearly about an actual capital W witch, scary witch, but but also has these other elements of the homeopathic um, medicine and and knowledge that's grounded. In, that's not just wave a wand and sparkles happen but mm -hmm. you know you have to make a potion and you have to know how to harvest the ingredients and how much she says at one point you know you got to be careful with those sleeping potions you know a, a twig or a leaf uh, you know the wrong way or to, uh, a twig or a leaf too much or too little can get it can have very different effects yeah and i just thought it is just this kind of offhand comment as she's teaching the younger uh woman but those were my favorite parts of the movie. Yeah. Yeah. There's some stuff where she's out in the woods and she could bend the trees and things like that. You know, some of that was cool. And yeah. Yeah. I mean, I look, I, I, it's not that I hate CGI. I just think most CGI effects are so, they're just exactly what they are. You know, mm -hmm. and they're not any more or any less. They don't invite your imagination to do anything. They just show you exactly what they want you to see. So, um, you know, I, I'm not opposed to it. I, 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 um, I watch a lot of movies with CGI. I just, I like it when you can find a way to do practical stuff that engages the audience's imagination um you know like she makes a sleeping potion and get, uh, to help the girl sleep who's been having nightmares and there's so much going on there right so you get to see her kind of make this potion crushing stuff with a mortar and pestle and pressing the leaves through so a little drip comes through and she just has this little like brandy glass that she has filled up with this potion yeah. And everything from the glass to how full it is to the color of the liquid, right? These are all choices that you make. And it's it, uh, to me, it struck me as it's like it's an oddly full glass, like it's almost full to brimming, right? And and then she's this strange lady is handing you a potion that she says is going to help you sleep, but it's scary. You're mm -hmm. like, I, you know, do I drink this? Do I trust her? What's it going to do to me? Is it going to make me have worse nightmares? How am I going to drink it? You know, and it stinks. And she mm -hmm. says, don't let the smell fool you. You know, you got to. And so then the girl decides to sort of shoot it, you know, like, like, like a, a big, big double tequila shot, just look, glurks it all back. And that, that whole scene is practical. And it's just about performance and circumstances and the choices you make in terms of, uh, you know, it's one actor handing the other, making a drink for the other actor and handing them that drink. And then the other actor deciding to drink the drink. Mm -hmm. Simple piece of cake, no CGI involved. And yet that scene stays with me more than the tree bending down. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. what, the, what does the tree bending down even mean? Uh, oh, she has some powers. Okay. Okay. What powers? Why? How is she doing that? You know what I mean? It's like it just, it, it's this 
thing that shows you like, oh, doesn't that look cool? And you're like, yeah, that, that does look kind of cool. But it doesn't stick to me. It doesn't do anything to me. And it doesn't invite me to interpret um, a relationship between mm -hmm. anything. Because the tree is literally non-existent. That she was just doing that. And maybe there was somebody there holding a tennis ball or something, you know. But yeah, um, there was no tree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I don't know. I yeah, we're kind of we're kind of getting to the end. So, would you would you recommend this movie to people as we're in, we're in October here? Yeah, I think it's. Um, I mean, people who are very into visuals. Like we said, this is a this is a really beautifully designed film. So I feel like it's it, it was worth watching to me just for the visuals alone because there were, um, I think you said something earlier about the director kind of painting pictures. I mean, there are lots of scenes in this where you just think like, oh, you could just have a picture of that on your wall, you know? Um, yeah. So. You know, people who are really into cinematography and if it, you know, doesn't bother you too much that the, that there's not really a great story there. Um, I think it's definitely worth watching from that aspect. Um, if you want a, you know, this is a spooky kind of a uh, film for this time of year, you know, like last weekend I was out hiking in the woods, you know, and you're starting to have the leaf, the leaves changing and all that. And it, you know, that's always a kind of a, it's a spooky time. Yeah. And so it definitely has that, uh, eeriness and spookiness that, it, you know, if you're somebody who likes that almost old school horror feeling without a lot of blood and guts, um, you might like this, but like we said, it just kind of falls short in the, in the, the script and story aspect. And for me personally, just for myself, I, I want to see more movies from this director. I hope he gets to do, um, more, but just with a little better script to go with it. So I would, you know, it's not a must see or anything like that, but I would, I would recommend it to people who are okay with a more of an art house type of horror. Um, yeah, there isn't a lot of, you know, jump scares and teenagers running around, you know, fighting monsters and things like that, you know? Right. I, I think it would, I think it's not accurate to say meditative, but it is a slower, mostly visual kind of exploration. I, I, I agree. I, I'd say, you know, if you're looking for a, an October Halloween -y movie to watch, Check it out. Yeah. Check it out. Um, it's it's a little slow. Um, and but there is some some good stuff in it for sure. Um, and there's some I had forgotten until just now where they eat they're they're starving, right? And so they eat the mushrooms that they find in the woods. Yeah. Uh and I thought that was a very effective scene. Yeah, they turn out to be uh, psychedelic mushrooms. Yeah, and so these two kids, lost and starving in the woods, are tripping out, and it's it's genuinely scary. Mm -hmm. Nothing happens, right? So, I mean, it goes to this sort of thing of, are they hallucinating this whole thing? Uh, what's What are they really afraid of? It just creates this tone of uncertainty in an effective way. But, but... It's it, it it's a little it leaves things feeling a little limp afterwards because the the movie again and again sets up this sense of like oh no oh no and now they were only imagining you know what <laughs> yeah. I mean and they sort of like it now does, it's really gonna go down and right then and it, really yeah down. exactly or a crow goes ah, and you go but oh. and then you're like you know if you do that too much then the kind of tension goes out of the line a little bit. And so, and I, I mean, thought, you know, I, I, I'd, I'd say thumbs up. I mean, I'd say, sure, check it out. Um, and we didn't, we didn't really talk about this. I mean, there's not too much to say about it, but even the ending where they finally, you know, spoiler alert, they kill the witch. 
Right. And that was just, it just kind of happens. You know, it wasn't like there was any real huge buildup. I felt like with that, it's just kind of anticlimactic, you know? Yeah. Well, and I mean, it was fine. Incredible. It was they, well done, they but her, don't they, they, they trick her somehow and end up pushing in the actual story. They yeah. trick her and push her into the oven. Right. When she, when it comes time for her to put pop them in the oven and cook them, they trick her and end up pushing her in the oven. And I was waiting for this. I was waiting for Gretel to pull a fast one on the witch. And I was curious to see how she was going to outsmart this witch who they had very effectively um, built up to be, you know, formidable, knowledgeable, daunting. Like you're not going to put one over on this witch. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so I was really curious to be like, how the heck is she going to get her and her brother out of this? And I mean, she does, but it's not, you know, it doesn't feel revelatory. Mm -hmm. It just kind of happens. Yeah. It just, they set it up and you think, oh, I bet that's going to come back around. And then when it's time for that to come back around, they telegraph it. So you're like, oh, it's coming back around now. <laughs> and then yeah. it comes back around and you're like, huh. <laughs> And it, it all looked cool. Like, you yeah. know, like, oh, I like the choices they made with, oh, blue flame. That's kind of cool. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. But, but it didn't, it didn't have the same uh, impact because you sort of, there's a, you're able to sort of watch it from a remove without feeling like you're, you're, you're in it uh, with it a vested. It feels suspenseful. Yeah. Really, you yeah. know. Yeah. I don't know. But, but yeah, uh, overall, uh, again, we, like we said, we, we kind of picked this apart, but it's a, it's a good movie. It's well-made and we've and certainly seen worse. <laughs> oh, for, yeah. <laughs> in yeah, the context for sure. of this podcast. We've seen oh worse. yeah, definitely. I mean, this is a quality film. It's not for everybody because I think, I think a lot of people would watch this movie and, and think it was kind of boring in all honesty, you know? Yeah. yeah. But it is beautiful. Yeah. And it's a, it's a gorgeous, it's a gorgeous film. So it's, I, I, I would, watch at least part of it again if i had the opportunity to see it on a big screen because i it's, some of those visuals you're just like wow look at that and you know i this almost this is one that uh i, I was thinking this would really be a great short you know just a 30 40 minute film you yeah know? and you could have you know it would have had just as much of an impact, I feel. I would give it even more than that. I, I'd say you could have made a 60 minute movie. Yeah, out of an it, hour long. You could, you could have cut some of the fat and you could have even just kept everything with both kids and the witch, you know, any everything with both kids and the witch and Gretel and the witch. Um, and, and it would have been very interesting and I don't think it would have felt as slow. You don't really need any of the, you can almost just, almost cut immediately to them finding the witch, like the stuff yeah. leading up and them wandering around in the, in the forest. A lot of that. And their, and their mother out. going mad and kicking yeah. them out was kind of scary and disturbing. And I think that's a good kickoff. And then they head into the woods and I really like the mushroom thing, but I then too, yeah. almost immediately after the mushrooms, you could skip the huntsman, right? Almost immediately after the mushrooms, you could find the house and, and, and leave it open to be like, Am I, is that real? Am I really seeing that or am I still tripping on those mushrooms? Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, I think that would have been um, a, a really compelling 60 minutes. Um, For sure. Anyway, um, so we already have our film picked for next week. We're going to watch The Lighthouse. What's the, I'm sorry, what's the name of the director of that? His name is Robert Eggers, I think is his name. So is it the same movie or the same director rather as The Witch that we talked about before? Yes. So yes, yes, yes. Uh, and uh, you have already seen it. I have not. So we're not going to talk about it yet. But right. why don't, uh, if you're listening to the podcast along with us, why don't you watch The Lighthouse if you have not already seen it? Black and white, I believe. Is it not? Black and white. Yeah, from 2019. So interesting. So that's another recent one. Um, and not, well, I don't want to unpack it too much, not overtly a horror movie, but definitely all kinds of interesting and disturbing goings on and mental questions and 
Definitely moody. Good for there'll October. Be, there'll be a lot to talk about with this one. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. So, so uh, I'm looking forward to it and uh, I hope you are looking forward to it too. And we will uh, talk to you next week. 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 Week.